Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. You know, Eddie, we're 21 games into the season, and almost half of those games have been decided by five points or less, and the trend continued again this week. I don't believe I've ever coached a season where we've had so many close games and uh, so many games where, uh, you know, it came down to the last possession. Uh, we were beaten uh, in Waco by Baylor last Saturday, 78-77, uh, to 77, and we just ran out of gas. We uh, are so thin on our front line, uh, Keanu Roberts and Brett Robich both fouled out. Uh, Maurice Robinson ended up with four fouls. Uh, we led most of the way and just couldn't hold on. Uh, fatigue uh, along with the foul situation hurt us. Then we came back against Kansas State back uh, earlier this week. and. Uh, I didn't think we played as well as we did in Waco, but we won the game 64-59, uh, to 59, but uh, the game was much closer than that. For fans outside our viewing area that may not know, we do a weekly call-in show, and I remember early on in the, in the season, we used to get calls saying, Coach, when are you going to trim that roster? You're playing too many people. Get those seven or eight people that you need. That's all you have now. You know, back in uh, December, we were playing 11 or 12 people in most of the games, just trying to uh, find out who uh, could really uh, play uh, amongst our young players. And since that time, I have never seen so many injuries. Uh, and uh, we are down to eight scholarship players, and it really uh, is a burden to go to practice every day. It's hard to practice and improve if you don't have daily competition. And uh, you're also afraid that if you work too hard, somebody's liable to twist an ankle or get hurt. So uh, we've been working under a handicap, uh, but I am proud of our ball club because they've really hung in there and we've been in every ball game. It's really not that funny, but sometimes it helps to laugh and keeps from crying in a situation like this. Now, if tense down to the wire basketball games are what you like, you can enjoy this week's highlight package. Back to take a look at all the action after this opening timeout. You know that guy, don't you? Jack Hartman, one of the outstanding coaches uh, during uh, the period of time that I've coached. He uh, retired from Kansas State, an OSU alum, played football and basketball here. But uh, I think anybody in uh, Big 12 country would tell you that he's certainly one of the outstanding coaches ever to coach in this area of the country. Actually coached Oklahoma State for two days. Was the head coach <laughs> here for two days. You know, timing is everything in all walks of life, certainly athletics included. But we caught Baylor with some real momentum down in Waco. Well, we had beaten them a week before by 28 points at our place and uh, had just done an outstanding job and really uh, blitzed them early, scored the first 14 points of the ball game. But it was a different story down there. Early in the game, Keanu Roberts, uh, our number one player, uh, went to the floor with an ankle injury and had to uh, sit out for a while. He did come back, but it did slow him down a little. Now, this was the first of back-to-back 26-point games for Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson had uh, played a couple games earlier this month and had been, or back in January I should say, and had been shut out, but uh, he certainly played well in the two games this week. They beat us in transition, that's one thing, we've really done a good job uh, most of the year, but Skinner just uh, looked like the All-American candidate that uh, he was in preseason. He, he hit us for an all-time high, 31 points, and uh, just, uh, just did an outstanding job of both ends of the floor. Made a great block at the end of the game to save the game for Baylor. This he one also, was a tough one to take, no question about it. Not because it went down to the final uh, seconds, but the fact is we were in control of this game most of the afternoon. Well, we had a six-point lead at halftime, 38-32, to 32, but if you talk to any basketball coach, anyone that really knows the game, and uh, you were to tell them you played on the road, uh, your team shot 58%. Uh, you only turned the ball over eight times. You out-rebounded the opponent seven rebounds. You'd say, well, you won the game. But uh, Baylor had a great shooting afternoon, and we had some defensive breakdowns. Uh, they shot 49%. Skinner, I mentioned uh, how many points he got, uh, but there was a little guard in the second half uh, by the name of Hunter that really uh, nailed uh, the coffin down for us. Well, that was a big foul right there. Keanu Roberts having to take a seat on the bench. But well, Keanu's got to get to a point where he uh, he's so aggressive, and, you, and when you play as aggressive as he does, you're going to pick up some fouls. And there's Hunter shooting the ball over Chad Alexander. But uh, he's got to correct what I call careless fouls. He'll pick up a couple of those uh, each ball game. And in this game, he only got to play 22 minutes. And uh, we've got to have him in the ball game, especially when we're as thin on the, off the bench as we are. We touched upon this on another show, but. And I asked you this question. I see what you're saying. Obviously, we need him there at the end of the game, but is that asking a lot of somebody who's so aggressive to kind of alter his approach here? 
Well, I think when I say careless fouls, I'm talking about not moving your feet and the guy starts to drive and you hook him with your arm or your knee and or you uh, uh, go out and try to steal the ball like he did in the game uh, out in the mid-court area. Uh, and just grab a guy by the wrist or you hand check him. Those are the kind of fouls you've got to eliminate because if you're aggressive, you are going to commit some fouls. That was a tough last 30 seconds right there, and I know we've covered it a, m a number of times. Uh, trying to get that play run with time running out. Pete had to settle for the three, got it to fall, but you know sometimes it's not always the guy out front. That's not his fault. We're waiting for something to develop. But you inside. know, we've been playing uh, all season uh, point guard by committee. We've right. had a lot of different people out there, and I think uh, that certainly was uh, evident there that we don't have a true point guard. But to anyone that might be watching young players, if you're down four points with about 20 seconds to go, uh, it's a two possession game and the best thing you can do if you got the ball in your hands is to penetrate to the basket and hope they foul you or maybe get the ball up and a lot of times teams will lay off when you drive to the basket and then you still have time to call a timeout and Pete was a little slow coming up and he did hit the tray but by the time he hit it uh, we were almost out of time. We finally came home but another dangerous opponent in Kansas State they came in winless as far as the conference concerned but you told your players this team can step up and bite somebody. I don't think there's a team in the Big 12 that can't jump up and beat the other ball club. Kansas might be the exception, although they got beat in, in Columbia the other night by the University of Missouri. But uh, K-State uh, was the team that knocked us out of the, the chance to go to the NCAA tournament last year, and they've got most of those players back. And uh, they, they're kind of like we are, a snake bit, in that they, they should have won two or three more ball games, but they just can't get over the hump. And uh, our players, I thought the way we came out, that they didn't have uh, really respect for them because I thought we were flat to begin the ball game. And uh, finally we got out on them and, by six points and then they fought back. And then just before halftime, we hit a little surge and, and got out uh, 31 to 24 at halftime. Good two on one break there. Peterson took the ball hard to the rack and gets foul. Nice pass by Keontae. First half, the defense created some offense, some needed offense for us. And at the beginning of the second half, Tom, we came out and I thought executed well. We got the game up to 13 or 14 points and uh, then just kind of put it back in, in low gear and uh, let them come right back in the ball game. This is where we were up 17 to 11 and really looked like we were going to break away from them, but uh, shots like that will bring you back quickly. When you, that tray has changed the, the game of basketball. There's no safe lead now thanks to that three-point shot. There's Peterson hitting a tough shot on a drive down the baseline. Pete had uh, 26 now? points and five rebounds. Well, I think he just probably gained some confidence in his shooting, but he's also doing, now there's what I'm talking about. There's mm -hmm. Keontae's third foul, and uh, that's the kind of foul you gotta eliminate. Nice play by Joe Atkins, lead pass to uh, Peterson. And that's what your defense uh, needs to do, is take the ball away from the opponents and uh, that leads to easy baskets. Nice turnaround jump shot by Robies. We're up 31-24. Brett had been sick uh, Monday and Tuesday, but played and had his second double-double of the season. Yeah, he, if, he, if we had to have played this game on Monday, Brett would not have been in the starting no, lineup. Well, even Tuesday he wouldn't have played, but he had 10 points and 11 boards. And this is the beginning of the second half, and uh, we really played quite well, and uh, then all of a sudden uh, we got a little stagnant at the offensive end, had some defensive breakdowns, and K-State roared back. You know, your point is well taken. The 9-2 to two run to end the first half, about a 9-4 to four run to start the second half. We're in control. Nice play by Chad Alexander. Came underneath the basket, let the rim uh, shield uh, him from the defender. And that was his only two points in the ball game, and Chad's been in a little bit of a, a shooting slump here the last few days. There's Peterson hitting one of his trays. He was four out of six, nine out of 16 overall. Joe Atkins Ooh. came on and I thought played probably one of the best games he's played all season. That was a big three pointer he hit there because uh, K-State had some momentum at that point. Nice lead pass. We try to isolate Keontae as much as we can down near the basket because he's so strong and, he, and he's quick and he normally uh, can make good things happen if we can get the ball to him. Considering how tight the ball game was, and we're getting on the latter stages right here, but Joe Atkins once again played well under pressure. I thought he did. I thought our two freshmen, Desmond Mason and Joe, both uh, showed a lot of uh, uh, spirit. I thought they uh, were much more aggressive and much more relaxed, and, and I think that's been a big key for uh, those two guys. Sometimes they go out there and they just try too hard. Now they're going for the, we're three eight points up. 
steal the ball and they have to foul and Peterson converts both free throws for the final margin of 64-59. Talk about a timely steal. You know, a lot of times uh, there's always that uh, point that coaches argue, if you're up three points uh, with 10 to 15 seconds to go, should you foul the other team mm -hmm. uh, and don't give them a chance to uh, shoot the three? And I think that you could debate that all day long and you'd probably get a lot of coaches that do that. Uh, I've always tried to stay away from it and I thought our defense really uh, did make a good play there. You certainly don't want to give up a three-point, and what's even worse is to give up a three-point and foul on that play. That's a cardinal sin. You know, we've talked all year long about Keani Roberts. His game has been rock solid in all categories. His career at Oklahoma State is rapidly drawing to a close, and we're going to hear from Keani as he reflects on his stay here in Stillwater. We'll do that when we return from this timeout. Welcome back to the show. You know, the numbers speak for themselves. Keani Roberts has put it all together here in his final season at Oklahoma State. We sat down with the Cowboy senior this past week. We discussed a number of things. In particular, we discussed putting it all together, saving the best for last. I've always wanted to, you know, improve my game each season and uh, each year try to be better than I was last year. And, uh, you know, with playing with guys like Country and, and Randy Rutherford and Brooks Thompson, you kind of learn how to uh, save your bets for last because that seems to be what those guys have always done. And uh, following behind those guys and learning from them and uh, trying to, to be more like them, uh, I think has really helped me out and helped me mature. When you look at your game and we talk about a total game, rebounds, assists, steals to go along with the points, you're a complete player now. You know, when I first got here, uh, my mainstay was defense, and, and I did that very well, and, and that's what I was called to do on, on those particular teams. But I think this year, definitely, uh, uh, with, our, with the makeup of our team this year, I have to uh, you know, definitely do a lot more. And uh, uh, coaches ask me to step up in uh, a lot of categories, and uh, I'm just trying to respond as well as I can and, and uh, do what it takes for our team to win the game. I've been through a lot of rough times here at Oklahoma State. Uh, I went through a period where uh, I wasn't uh, big, very mature. You know, uh, that, a lot of that has to do with age. I'm a relatively young senior, so um, and coach understood that. Uh, the fans understand that, and, and they've always been there, right by my side through all the good times and the bad times. And uh, I think that's when you really know you have a family is when you have fans who stick with you as well as your coaches. You know, four years ago this day look so far away, I'm sure. Has it hit you as yet that your college career is rapidly drawing to a close? Um, slowly but surely. It's like uh, beginning of the year, you know, you kind of look back and say, man, my senior year is coming up and this is going to be it. And uh, it, it hits you. And I think as the more the season progresses, uh, the more it, it starts to set inside of you that uh, this is the last time you're going to be able to perform for these great fans and play in this great arena. And uh, it, it, it begins to choke you up a little bit, but uh, it's something that all seniors go through and uh, hopefully I'll be able to handle it gracefully. Right now I want to win and uh, you know, if I feel like if I continue to win and if uh, I do the things that are necessary for our team to be successful, then whatever the Lord has in store for me is, is the road I'll take. And uh, if not basketball, then uh, definitely I'll get my degree next December. And, uh, you know, I definitely have a lot of options. Keani, there's still some of your final season left, but up until now, what would be your fondest memory of playing basketball at Oklahoma State? Um, you know, I get asked that question a lot, and I think that time and time again, I have to refer to uh, the final four season. Not only the, the way it ended, but the whole the whole season put together because that was a time where you know we were down you know we were definitely down and and people a lot of people counted us out and the way we came out of that season and the way we started to play the way we came together i mean it was it was so it was so incredible such a phenomenal event that it was almost like it was scripted we have guys that that I played with then that I will always have close and dear friendships with, uh, guys that I'll never be able to forget. Um, and it was just a, the, the total season was really a, a supreme effort from everyone. Getting the chance to play for a big, big A championship 
and winning. Uh, getting a chance to play with a guy like Big Country and now seeing him in the pros. Um, and then getting a chance to just play for the national championship. You, you couldn't be a part of a better scene, couldn't be a part of a, a better situation as a basketball player and just as a basketball fan. So if I had to say a memory or something that really stuck with me and that I always remember, I'd always have to return to the Final Four year. And what an important cog he was uh, two years ago as a sophomore when uh, you know we went through a beating Drexel, Drexel beat Alabama, beat uh, Massachusetts, uh, beat Wake Forest in order to get to the Final Four in Seattle. And when you get to the Final Four, you know you need a lucky bounce or a friendly call, and we just couldn't quite get over the hump against the Bruins. But believe me, he had a great season. He had a great year last year. And I am just amazed at the maturity that he has displayed in his senior year. And that's why uh, I would hope so much that we can get back in the NCAA tournament for our three seniors, but especially Keontae, because uh, he has really given a lot to this program. It's an amazing record when you stop and think he is leading our team in six categories. And I've never had a player uh, in my uh, coaching days at Creighton or the University of Arkansas or University of Kentucky that's ever done that. So he is a, a great player, but he's also a wonderful human being. The Notebook, the Longhorns, they're both coming up next when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. Hi, I'm Camera 2 Operator Scott Allred, and you're back with Coach Eddie Sutton and Tom Dorado. TD, take it away. <laughs> you never know who's going to show up on this show. Quickly, let's open up this week's notebook. We, for, we call this first item mic time. Is this a trend? Coaches taking the PA uh, microphone and talking to fans? I think you're seeing more and more of that. In fact, two of our coaches in the Big 12 did it this week to try to curtail the derogatory things that were being said uh, in their arena uh, towards the other ball club. And that's the one thing I always advocate to our fans. Let's cheer hard and be very positive and help them. But we don't need to be yelling uh, nasty slogans at the opponent. We're not going to get into the entire seating system, but in general, in brief, who won't play if we stopped it right now on Thursday, the first day of the tournament, the Big 12? Well, with the Big 12, they're taking all the teams in Kansas City, which I think is a good idea, but the four teams uh, will get buys, and that would be the winners of the Northern Division, the winners of the Southern Division, and then the third and fourth place teams, whoever has the best record, regardless of what division you're in. Right now, it would be Kansas. Uh, Texas, uh, Iowa State, and Colorado. Okay, the uniforms. Quickly, the uniform flap, a new look. <laughs> well, you know, the NCAA is very restrictive in a lot of areas, and one of them is the uniforms that you wear. And, of course, Nike has been kind enough to supply all of our uh, uniforms and all of our equipment. And uh, for some reason, they uh, did something on our home uniforms that wasn't quite legal, so we had to send the uniforms back to Nike to the uh, uh, this past week and they trimmed off a little bit and uh, made it work and the NCAA said now nah, it looks better so I don't think anyone including our fans I couldn't even tell the difference it was just uh, the way that on Cowboys they took the Y and brought it all the way underneath <laughs> the, uh, the the name. Well I'm glad we're in yeah, we're all standard now okay Texas in town Saturday 12:45 tip off making their first trip to Stillwater in 20 years. Well, you know, uh, when I was playing here at Oklahoma State, we used to play Texas all the time, and I guess they uh, did away with that. Now they're in our conference. It'll be a yearly uh, trek north for them uh, across the Red River. Texas has the best group of athletes of any ball club in our conference, and they really drilled us in that first game. Down there. That's the only really conference game we've not been in. So it should be a great, a great outing Saturday afternoon. Well, it's a rematch. Oklahoma State and Texas, again, 1245 Gallagher Ive Arena. See you there, and we will see you here next week. <laughs>